Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial. My name is Ben Morgan and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to export a little chunk of a Minecraft world as a 3D model. So to be doing this we'll be using the program called Mineways which you can find by looking up Mineways on Google and it'll bring you to this website. It's free to download and you can see here that some people use it for making 3D printouts um, but we will be using it for export into Blender. And so go ahead and download that from the downloads and it's a quick installation and uh, resume when you're done with that. So let's go to the file. Uh, you can see here that this is a test that I did with it and it's a little cutout of a server that I have. And something to note if I were to just go and uh, go to the 3D view, this is what it looks like. Okay, so it's an actual 3D model of your Minecraft world. But something to note is that it only does what you could call a facade of everything. Uh, it won't do the inside of a room. Um, it will only do the outside of everything, I guess. It makes like a shell of your world. Um, so yeah, if you have like, like the inside of this tower, for instance, um, would not be rendered or created or anything like that. Um, so that's something you should keep in mind. Um, okay, so if I were to go into textured mode, you can see also that it exported textures, and I have GSLL, GLSL shading on, so it has the real-time shadows and stuff like that, and I'll show you all how to do that. Um, but yeah, you can see here that it's a large, um, a very large um, model. It's like 50, 558,000 vertices. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, so it's it's pretty laggy on my computer, but yeah, you can use this to make little 3D printouts or you know stuff like that. So let's just start a new file. Say first, and let me start a new file, and let's begin on the process. So first, what you're going to do is open up Mineways from the folder that you downloaded and we're going to want to import our world. So if we do file open world, you can see here that these are all of well these would be all of your single player worlds if you have any. If you don't and you play on a uh, a like multiplayer server or anything like that, what you're going to need is the level.dat file or um, actually the whole world folder, but then you're going to want to use the .dat file. So let me show you how to do that. So you do file open and you're going to want to find the uh, the place, um, the address of your world um, that you're going to load. Um, if it, if you were just doing a single single player world, um, like I said, uh, open world would suffice. But in this case, we're going to use a multiplayer world. Um, so I have a level dot dat file. Okay, so I have my world folder, and it's the dot dat. So you're going to want to open that and it's going to open up in Mineways. And you can see here that we have a, a little 2D representation of our world. So that's pretty cool. We can now go ahead and uh, look at some of the options that we have in view. So you can view lighting, which would um, show what your whole scene would look like with your torches on. And you can view caves. Um, all the caves beneath your your little world, um, but we're not going to really need any of those. I'll just show you how to make a selection and export. So, what you're going to want to do is pan around with left click and zoom in with your middle mouse button, and then right click and drag over what you want to select. So in this case, I want to export this little town. And that message that popped up was only saying that some of the stuff uh, in my selection is not going to be um, exported in the final export because uh, you can see my lower depth is set to 62 when um, 0 is the lowest depth in Minecraft. So it was just saying that everything below 62 is not going to be exported, but that's fine. So we're going to want to adjust these two little sliders right here until we have just the right amount for what we need. So you can see here, when I raise this up, 
everything gets unhighlighted, but when I start lowering it, lowering it down, um, what is at that depth will highlight in purple. And so you can see around 60, it's fine. And the max height uh, is just saying the max height of the model. So you can see here that everything, um, everything below 70 and everything above 60 would be rendered. So we want to raise this until it looks all clean like that. If you have any dark colors like that, that means they're going to be cut off. So you want to raise them up until everything is just right. OK. So now what we're going to do is file export for 3D printing. And now the difference between these two export modes, I don't know what export schematic means, but export for rendering and export for 3D printing, what that will do, uh, export for rendering, will export everything as a separate object, everything that's a, um, its own, like everything that shares a texture will be the same object, and export for 3D printing will export the entire cutout as one object, and you um, will have a texture map that will control all the textures for everything. So we're going to do that, export for 3D printing, and you're just going to set the the uh, place that you want to export it to. So I'll just say tutorial. And OK, so this is an important window. So you can see here on the left, we have some options for the texture of the model. Uh, if we were to set it to solid colors, it would just do simple colors for everything. Uh, if we were to do full color texture patterns, that would do the just textures that you see in the game. And now these are all settings for stuff like 3D printing. Um, it's <clears throat> centered around the uh, around the company Shapeways. Um, so you can see here they have all their types of you know stuff that you can print out. But we don't have to really worry about that in this instance. But here we have some cool options. So we have fill in air bubbles, which we want. We want to seal off entrances to caves and fill in isolated tunnels, meaning that if the tunnel has no exit, uh, we want it to be filled in. We want to connect parts sharing an edge. We, need, we want to connect corner tips, and we want to weld all shared edges. And that will just help make sure that there are no doubles in our model in which two vertices share the same exact position. Um, if you were 3D printing, you might want to do this, melt snow blocks, which would um, get rid of the little extra you know fourth of a block on the snow um, so now we're just gonna press OK and that'll be done it'll give you an approximate cost but you don't really have to worry about that because you can always scale down your file or scale down your model before you export it so what we're gonna do is file import I'm using blender 2.7 but this should be available in most versions of Blender. And we're going to import this last one, X3D Extensible 3D, or a WRL file. And I'm going to find the one saying tutorial. And we're going to open it up. And you can see here, it's really big. And you might be like, OK, what, what's all this? Uh, but if you just press S and scale down and move your mouse in, We'll get a more reasonable size. And you can see now that we have our Minecraft world. And it's a little town. And if I were to go into texture, you see that everything is textured. So pretty neat. Um, there are some problems with the texturing, such as with the um, blocks for plants and stuff like that. But um, that's just one of the downfalls of using this program. But from far away, everything looks pretty good <laughs> if you're just going to do a render like that. Um, OK, so let me show you guys how to do the real-time shadows, because I think that's something that's important for um, previewing something like this. Because one of the main reasons that you want to bring a Minecraft world into Blender is so that you can render it with shadows, because Minecraft doesn't have that uh, many you know, shadows. So what you do is you change your default lamp to a sun. You would just go to the lamp settings and sun, 
and you can set it to like a yellowish kind of color doesn't really matter and make sure ray shadow is on and then if you press N to bring up the uh, settings on the right here and go to shading change that from multi texture to GLSL and you'll be able to start seeing real-time shadows like so so you can see we can move the Sun around we can rotate it with R and the shadows will move so that's pretty cool so if we were to just look at this with our camera right now and uh, render it it might look good it might not so there are a few things that we can change to make this look better um, if you go to the material settings for your object um, you'll see that it looks kind of weird because that's just the big texture map that we have um, <clears throat> go to the texture for that material and uh, scroll down and something that I like to do is desaturize everything a little bit because the default textures look kind of oversaturated and not very good but I find if you put the color influence to like 0.9 That'll make the texture influence the color of the um, white material a little bit less, and it'll just make it a little bit de more desaturized. So, uh, yeah, that's important. Okay, so next, uh, we're just going to go into the world settings and turn on ambient occlusion and environment lighting. And turn that down a little bit. And uh, finally, shift A, add mesh plane, and scale up. And let's add a simple material to that plane. Darken it a little bit. All right. Um, OK, so now if we were to render this right now, it would look like this. So yeah, that's a pretty fast and simple way to show off your Minecraft world if you wanted to, or something cool that you made. Um, you could just quickly bring it into Blender and render it out instead of, you know, taking a screencast or something in Minecraft. Um, so, yeah. Um, thank you for watching this tutorial. My name is Ben Morgan, and this was how to export a 3D model from Minecraft to Blender using Mindways. Thank you for watching. <laughs>